All right. From the tips, listeners, we got a special guest joining us this week. It is LSU women's head coach Garrett Runyon joining us on the show. Excited to get his insight from the collegiate game. And we've we've had the pleasure of crossing paths before at the Jackson T. Stevens Cup. So very excited to have him on the show today. So welcome, Garrett. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having me. And uh, yeah, those were some good places we crossed past uh, at the Jackson. Yeah, T- no kidding. Jackson T. Stevens Cup tournaments there the last two yeah. years at the Elotion Club and then um, at Seminole. Those are <laughs> two of the two of the courses I remember most for sure. Yeah, I've I've got some nice photography, and it's always fun to uh, experience those exclusive places and and see some high quality golf at the same time with with your team and some other collegiate teams there as well. And how I like to start out all these interviews is just to allow our listeners to get to know a little bit about you before we dive into the question. So I'd love you to provide them with, you know, how did you get into the game of golf and and why do you love the game? And we'll start there. Yeah, I was uh, I was born and raised in Orlando, Florida, and uh, my dad played golf at Kent State. So I, um, you know like everybody else picked up a club at three or four years old and probably didn't play a tournament until I was nine or 10. I played a lot of other sports growing up, football, basketball, and baseball, and uh, all the way up into high school and stuff, but knew I wasn't going to go too far in those sports. And, um, and so I stuck with golf as I I knew I wanted to play a sport in college and um, Mm -hmm. being in the hotbed of Orlando at the time, you know, I was fortunate enough to grow up playing out at Bay Hill and got to be around, you know, Mr. Arnold Palmer and, um, and a lot of other tour pros there from Isle Worth. And, um, and it was right when Tiger was coming up um, and on his hot streak there in the late 90s, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, um, okay. and so it, it was, um, you know, that, that was a normal thing. A lot of my friends, actually, their, their dads were tour stars and, and uh, Scott Hope, John Cook, uh, guys like that. And I just, you know, went to school with Payne Stewart's kids. and um, Very cool. Corey Pavin's kids and and a lot of those things. I mean, I remember high school matches and we had David Ledbetter and John Cook and all these uh, tour stars that were basically falling around. And to me, that was that was Jason's dad. That was that was Cameron's dad. Mm-hmm, and um, mm-hmm. and you know, I I got hooked that way. Um, I guess before golf was kind of really really cool, but it was um, golf is I like so much about it because it, everything is earned. Nothing is given mm-hmm. to you. You have to work for everything. There, there is no defense in golf, and um, you can't fake it. And, and you, there's multiple ways to go about getting the job done, and you got to figure out what works for you. And um, it just challenges you mentally and physically, and it just, uh, it's just a, it's a good sport. Yeah, I think that's a that's a nice way to grow up around all those folks to definitely push you to improve your game, to. Uh, being eventually being a collegiate golfer yourself, uh, but but through your time kind of in college, going through golf, when did you kind of decide or, or figure out you kind of might want to pursue coaching um, as as a profession as you were going through the 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 life of golf, I guess as we all do. Yeah, after I graduated college, I was like everybody else, wanted to play professionally. And um, I graduated Mm -hmm. in 2008, which was not a great time as far as the economy goes. Sure, sure. uh, A lot of members and some people at Bay Hill and some other courses that said they'd kind of helped me out when when the time came. um, You know, a lot of their their business was in real estate, and that was Mm -hmm. certainly going the other way. And so they said, we'd love to help you out, but we can't right now. And so I I tried to play a little bit, and I I had some nagging injuries and some – you know, bottom line, just kind of lost confidence. And um, mm-hmm. I didn't want to be somebody that was 30, 35 years old with a, a car that had 300,000 miles on it and 12 bucks in my bank account. And um, yeah. my mom actually found that uh, there was a job opening at Nova Southeastern University for an assistant coach position. She's like, you love the water, you love South Florida. This may be a great place for you to go down there. You can be close to the game, still practice and play a little bit. And and get in that way. And so, um, that kind of piqued my interest. And, um, and, and maybe before that, when in high school, when I was going on my official visits, uh, to different schools, um, kind of seeing the different coaches, old coaches, young assistants, how they did stuff. It, um, 
it kind of thought made me think like that that could be fun um to be mm-hmm. around college athletics uh still be around the game still be competitive and um so maybe it started back then and my mom kind of helped me yeah. push that way and I was fortunate enough to get a job at nova southeastern pretty young and uh and here we are cool mom's wisdom is always right I, that's, that's what right. i i get that as well so they, they always know best and I, w- I would think coaches wear a lot of different hats when it comes to kind of your responsibilities with the team. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to hear from you, like, is it you're a, you're a golf pro, you're teaching them with their swing, you're, you know, you're almost not driving them around like in a minivan as, a, as like a soccer mom, but I feel like there's a lot of we probably different hats that you wear. Um, so how do you kind of balance all those things and what, what does kind of your role look like from from a coaching standpoint? Yeah, I mean, while my title is head coach and everybody calls me coach, I mm-hmm. sometimes feel like I'm actually, the, the actual coaching part is 10% of the job. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I view it more as a CEO or manager of a Fortune 500 company. I mean, I, sure. we manage eight to 10 players with different personalities, different backgrounds. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. The swing coaches, they all come in with swing coaches. So you're managing that. And now with agents, you kind of manage with the agents yeah. a little bit. You've got parents, administrators, um, other staff, you know, my assistant, Alexis Rather, director of ops, you know, getting the men's team and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. You just, I'm always managing these things like a captain or an admiral of a fleet of ships sure. and, and making sure everybody's confidence is high, um, that they're, they're getting enough attention, that they know their job that they're doing their job and they're getting better mm-hmm. at their job. Um, then, then at times I feel like I'm, I'm a father away from home for them. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I've helped, especially on the ladies side, I've, I've helped them with a lot more life skills this year. I've changed a flat tire. I've jump started a couple <laughs> cars. I've, I've talked to them about stocks and mortgages and, and kids yeah. and family and, and other life issues. And I guess you'd say all these things fall under other duties assigned, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, the uh, the actual coaching part feels like uh, very small sometimes with the way some of these big programs are are, are heading or are sure. or whatever, whatever you want to say with and I'll, and their businesses. And so yep. um, I think you do have to have a manager CEO business mindset mm-hmm. a little bit along with the coaching style as well. Yeah, you, and you mentioned uh, dealing with agents and obviously the newer switch to the NIL deals and the players' likeness. I feel like that's got a, I guess, before and after, what was the big transition period like for you as a coach to kind of juggle the, those things? Yeah, for the agent part, you know, before they couldn't talk to them until you set it up through compliance and it was kind of like a two-week window at the end of the mm-hmm. season. And um, I re- I remember, you know, when I was coaching the men's side that um, Sam Burns and, and Louis yeah. Gagne, who was on the uh, Corn Ferry Tour, they asked me to sit in on some of those pitches from the agents. And mm-hmm. um, one, I really appreciated that because I felt like, I mean, they, they valued my opinion, pin, uh, my opinion and um, mm-hmm. I, I really appreciated that. And we were going to give them honest feedback because we've seen a few things with, with other agents and deals and just how it works. And to see through the fluff and whatnot. And uh, now, I mean, agents can, they can DM it, all the girls or anybody they yeah. want anytime yeah. they want and talk to them. Um, and, and some of the agents, they don't ever talk to the coaches. And some of them, I, you know, we have one player and she, she calls me a lot, um, mm-hmm. calls me a lot. Hey, we're doing this. We're doing that. Is that okay? We want to work around this. And I certainly like that because it's transparent and I'm, I'm not trying to get in the way or I'm trying to just yeah. help both parties. And, um, so it, it's certainly another factor. I'm, I know, um, you know, Ann Walker, the head coach at Stanford, we've talked a little bit because she's got the number one yeah. player in the world in Rose Zhang, mm-hmm. and I've got the number two player in the world in, in Ingrid mm-hmm. Lindblad. So we've kind of compared notes on yeah, yeah. certain time demands with, with the agents and, and things like that. And uh, it's just another element that keeps on adding to, to college golf. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like um, coaching and college – college athletics in general. I worked in college athletics as a graduate assistant at Illinois State for a bit and kind of that camaraderie between schools and like sharing information, I think goes a long way 
when you're when you're talking about having the you know number one and number two player in the country it's nice to be able to bounce um some things off someone else to make sure everything's going smoothly yeah <laughs> sometimes exactly. so yeah you mentioned uh nova southeastern briefly as your your first coaching stint and quickly you guys uh did did pretty well there won the the d2 national championship uh, what do you attribute to you know that quick early success? Was it just a, the right time, right place, and um, how did you kind of kind of mold yourself into your initial coaching kind of I guess philosophy and and thinking? Yeah, the the setup at Nova Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, was really good. I felt like they were sitting on a on a gold mine. Um, mm -hmm. Kevin Marsh, who was the men's and women's head coach at the time, had had won three time three national championships with the women's side and um awesome. he left me with a good roster so i came into a good situation uh but i was the assistant for one year um and he was gone with the men or with the women so i went to mm -hmm. with the men by myself pretty much from day one um i was close to the guy's age i could relate to what they were going through um they welcomed me and they were eager to kind of mm -hmm. to learn and um you know, I think I had a little bit of credibility coming from a, a bigger SEC school. So they were asking questions, what it was like, how, how we did things. Um, and, you know, so with Kevin gone with the women, I would go with the men. So I kind of viewed it. I was the head coach from day one. And um, mm -hmm. it, it didn't hurt that we also had a future PGA Tour player on our team and Ben Taylor, who um, nice. eventually came with me to LSU. So yeah, that, uh, that certainly helped and, and got us going in the right direction. Yeah, for sure. I feel like that's a a nice way to give you confidence too, as you know, I, f I feel like I'm doing the right thing and it, it paid off on, on the course as well to, to see that success come through. And you mentioned, you know, leaving for LSU, bringing Ben Taylor with you. Um, it was pretty quickly after that. I'm sure your, your coach that you had at LSU called you up quickly like hey we want you back you got you know the team you know the the campus we know you'll do a good job so what um what kind of brought you back to LSU and how did that transpire um, before even some more success there yeah I think uh, you know there's a lot of coaches that get started and they're in D2 and they they want to leave and, and try and get up yeah. as fast, fast as possible I, I really was happy down there I mean I was yeah a couple hours away from my family I love South Florida we had a good team mm -hmm. we had a good spot um I wasn't making very much money uh, sure. so that was a little challenging but um you know Chuck had actually called me the year before so after my first year at Nova he okay. had called me and said hey I think my assistant's gonna move on do you mm -hmm. want to come up here and I said absolutely um, and then he called me, he's like, Garrett, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, Shane Warren at the time was, he goes, he's, he's, he's he didn't get the two lane job. And so he's going to stay another year. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that, that, that's all right. Cause I was in a good position. And so that next year, Kevin Marsh, he had, he had left he, um, to pursue other adventures and they named me the head coach of the men's team. And that year we went on to win the national championship and was fortunate enough to be the division two player of the year. And then um, Shane had left that, that year and Chuck had called me and said, okay, now you definitely can come up. And so yeah. without that, um, you know, I got to come up back to my alma mater with a little mm -hmm. bit of um, a little bit of, of something under my bio that, that yeah, meant yeah. something. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sure. And, and gave me a little credibility. But, but Nova was great because it, it let me learn on a smaller stage about yeah. coaching, kind of what worked, what didn't develop my philosophies and, and, and get ready and give me some experience before jumping in with the, uh, with the big boys mm -hmm. in the SEC. Yeah, for sure. And, and going back to, to LSU, um, you guys, you know, reached the pinnacle of, I guess, college golf on the men's side, winning the national championship in, in 2015, which is awesome. And your first for the Tigers in, in 60 years, kind of, I guess, what, all brought up lead up led up to that point what do you remember from that day and and kind of i guess um just talk a little bit about how that championship what that championship meant to you yeah no i mean it was it was pure joy 
pure excitement and uh and honestly exhausted <laughs> yeah, i don't think yeah. i don't long think people season. realize yeah i don't think people realize how grueling and long the national championship is um mm -hmm. chuck chuck winstead the men's head coach at the time uh, still is the head coach he uh he and i figured it out we walked close to 90 miles for the week um, that's crazy in bradington florida humid yeah. bradington florida in may um so we were just we were just exhausted we didn't hit yeah. a single golf shot um mm -hmm. but it was it was great i mean to win it at your alma mater um is it, something special you know winning winning the first one at, at nova southeastern which was the first women or excuse me first men's national championship in any sport at nova southeastern uh that was very, very special cool. um and then to come do it at my school where i was trying to do it as a player um yeah, trying to do it as yeah. a player didn't get it done i think there's been so many players that have tried obviously and, and mm -hmm. to get it done it was a, a little bit of a relief in there too but it was it was pretty special and pretty awesome yeah and i think um with it being close to home would you at concession in Brainton were were you able to have some of your family there i think it's only like a two-hour drive from orlando not sure if your your folks still live down there any family but i feel like that'd be a pretty special moment to be able to share with them it being so close to home i did um they they drove over my parents and my my brother drove over um, very very I, awesome yeah it, it was pretty cool I, I still remember um you know taking the picture with them and the trophy and the ncaa background and the flags mm -hmm, in the background mm -hmm. all that stuff it was definitely a cool moment to share it with them and um I remember my dad he's he's kind of a man of not a lot of words and he gave me a hug and said i'm proud of you and kind of just sat there in disbelief because it was you know the mm -hmm. second national championship in what, three or four years and um it was it was cool to share that with uh, some family members and uh, unfortunately my wife was back home uh with our mm -hmm. son that was born two months uh prior so he was yeah two months old and, and left back home but um we got some cool pictures with uh with him in the trophy and nice. tiger stadium and back at the golf course and all that so it was um it was a lot of fun and then we got to go on the uh, golf channel the morning after and so um a lot of cool. the family that wasn't there didn't get to see it you know they got to watch that which was uh which was cool cool for them because you know we're not not like a, our, all our football games are on tv or anything yeah. like that they don't get to yeah. see <laughs> see what i do sometimes that aren't in the golfing background so yeah. it was it was very uh very fun yeah with with the team and the match play I, and walking all of that distance i can imagine it was pretty exhausting but a, a good payoff at the at the end of the week for sure absolutely and um <clears throat> when it comes to you know lsu and and also south nova southeastern i was thinking you you pretty much you're close to a triple crown with the national championships you ever think you'll go to d3 and try, <laughs> try to get a, a d3 national championship well, well maybe when i'm old and gray and I'll yeah, that, but, yeah. but right now I'm, I'm trying to get the women's ones so i was I'm gonna to say first women's i think one that, that that'll, that'll be my triple crown yeah i was gonna say i think that counts i, I was i was gonna allude to that later on as well but i think that would be pretty impressive to to do it at two different levels as well as you know uh, both on the men's and the women's side so. Well, so some people may not realize but when i was at nova southeastern we played the conference championship at uh concession and ben taylor okay. was on that team and we yeah we we won by 37 shots so when we went holy back there, cow um ben taylor was on he had transferred to lsu a year after i'd got there and mm -hmm. um and so he actually was the one that made the winning putt for the national championship that's, at LSU. And, and that's we pretty believe, sweet. We've been told, I'm not sure if this is true, but we're the first player coach duo to win at the a national championship in division two and division one, albeit I was an assistant at division one and a head coach division two, but I believe Ben Taylor is the only uh, player to win one at uh, D two and D one. And, uh, and so we kind of have that connection there, yeah. which is, which is pretty interesting. That is very impressive. And, and yeah, just great to be able to, to represent that as well. And you mentioned, you know, you're with the women's side now and after your, your great success, success on the men's side. Uh, and you kind of have, you've helped and you already mentioned you have the number two amateur in the world, um, in Ingrid and how, with, with all of the recruiting aspects that go into the coaching job and the way golf is, 
you know, a global sport. You have some some girls on the team that are from all over the country. I know Carla's from Spain as well. Ingrid's from from Sweden. How do you how do you find these these great players and and great personalities that fit into your program? And how do you get them to end up becoming Tigers? Yeah, the the grand old recruiting question. Yes, um, yes. There, there's a lot that goes into it, um, you know, but ultimately it comes down to relationships and reputation. Um, mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm a good salesperson, and I tell recruits that. I, I tell them I'm not mm -hmm. trying to sell them anything. There's a lot of good coaches out there, and they can sell, and they sell good. Sure. Um, I, I tell them I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to sell them anything. I'm, I'm trying to tell, show them what we do and how we do it. And if this seems like a good fit, then, then let's go forward. Um, you know, there isn't anything I'm not willing to do as long as it's legal. <laughs> uh, I flew to Japan mm -hmm, a few mm -hmm. years ago recruiting. Uh, we've gone all over Europe. Um, yeah. I wish there were more players in the state of Louisiana, but right now there's mm -hmm. not as many. So I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get the, the best players to compete for a national championship. But you touched on it. Um, Having the right people, I think, is first. Everybody's like, whoa, look at her swing and look at her score. I said, what kind of person is she? Because mm -hmm. I'm going to spend more, almost more time with them than I am my wife. And um, mm -hmm. and I want good quality people first. And we keep our teams fairly small because um, we're a close-knit team. And so mm -hmm. having the right fit is is definitely more important sometimes than, than the scoring average. Uh, because mm -hmm. if you are, get the right people and you foster a, a good culture and a good – environment that that where everybody's happy and competing um you're going to get the best out of those players and that's that's ultimately what you want yeah we need to make a little sizzle video of you changing tires and providing stock advice i feel like that would that would encourage some people to to show up with uh, uh the, I, I joke that i'm gonna start a like a body shop mechanic shop or something yeah. because they <laughs> Um, I, they got videos and I know the girls have put me on Instagram and Snapchat, whatever, <laughs> changes in their, their tires yeah. and stuff. I put a, I literally, I literally put on a license plate yesterday. So they're like, can you help me? So <laughs> that's amazing. But yes, as duties, um, outside of the job description, yeah. but also necessary. And, um, and you know, with the, with the people that you have brought in the, and the women that have been a part of your team you, you know you've seen that success grow over over the years since you become the head coach and you guys were able to to capture an sec championship uh first one in 30 years on the on the women's side so you know the success is following you everywhere how did that one come about um with with the women's side yeah again i mean there, there's a lot of factors that go into winning a conference yep. championship um Number one, you need good players. Um, you, you need you need all all you need to have all five players on as good a form as they can be. Um, you know, you, you need good breaks. Um, and for us, our our players had a, a bit of a, sh a chip on their shoulder. Uh, the the year before, we had won the stroke bay portion, and we had broke some LSU, some SEC, and even an NCAA record in mm -hmm. shooting forty six under par. But we lost in the semifinals of match play. So yeah. they did all that. Um, and it and would have been SEC champions a few years prior, but they changed the format to match play. So they had, okay. they really had nothing to show for it. And uh, mm -hmm. so they were motivated to get back and, uh, and kind of come home with some hardware and, and, and show that they, uh, they did do something. So. Yeah. I think you guys definitely uh, belong out there. And when it comes to, uh, I guess, playing events, prior to, you know, the end of season tournaments when it comes to SEC championship or, or, or nationals, how much confidence does it give you guys when, you know, you win like for say then, you know, Jackson T Stevens cup at the lotion club um, or, or one of those other events, how does that help you guys kind of move forward in the season or what do you take away from those events? Yeah, it, it just builds a lot of confidence. So uh, when I, when I build our schedule, I'm trying to build the hardest schedule I can, I can do. Yeah. Um, you know, I think two years ago we had the seventh ranked hardest schedule in the country. Last year we had the 10th uh, ranked strength of schedule. This year will probably be very similar. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I want them to, I joke that I'm training Navy SEALs. I want them to be battle tested. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that at SECs and nationals and regionals and things like that, you know, we play some, some big tough courses and, and I want them to be prepared for that. And, and then I want them to be prepared after for pro golf. If they choose to yeah. do that. 
And um, so there's, uh, you know, anytime you can win a big tournament, you you feel like that's just putting more deposits into the mental bank account of confidence. And uh, as long as you keep making deposits into that mental bank account of confidence, you'll you'll be all right. And and, and don't make too many withdrawals. And and there yeah. will be withdrawals, but um, it's nice to get those big wins and make those deposits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I got to think then you can, you can pull back to those kind of moments when you're leading into some of those bigger events down, down the stretch as well. Absolutely. So we talked a lot about, you know, your career, where you've been, how you've, you've formed some success over the various programs that you've been involved with when it comes to just breaking down, you know, your coaching personality and, and strategy, how, how do you kind of formulate your philosophy and how do you, um, translate that to to the players that you're coaching yeah it's a it's another question that i could go on and on about in, sure. a, in a bunch of different directions but um mm -hmm. ultimately I, I want my teams to be known for being prepared and, and having competitive toughness um part of my philosophy is to keep it simple keep it consistent and uh and run a program that has a lot of has a lot of freedom within a structure um you know, the ladies know they can trust me with anything. Some, mm -hmm. some tell me too much, um, <laughs> but, but I don't, I, I don't treat that lightly. I, I like the fact that they yeah. trust me enough to tell me what's going on in their lives, good or bad. And, and I want them and I won't judge them. They know I won't judge them. They know I won't say anything. And I genuinely have their best interest at heart. And I mm -hmm. appreciate that. I mean, they know they can come to me and, and I'll give them one of three answers basically when they come as a team is, is one is yes. Okay. We'll, we'll do that. Or, <laughs> or two, I'll say, I'll take it to committee. And that means, uh, Lexus rather my assistant and I will, will discuss it and, um, and make a decision. And then I have some that are just non-negotiables. Um, so mm -hmm. they, they know there's a, th there's times where I'll listen and they have a say, and, and there's times where I say I'm the head coach and this is what we're doing. And they say, okay. Um, Mm -hmm. But overall, I would say, you know, we're, we're pretty structured, but I give them enough freedom to be themselves and, and express themselves. And, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of the, the way we've been going. When it comes to the, uh, the team requesting something, what have been some of the more interesting ones that, that you've received? <laughs> uh, everything from, you know, we've gone, uh, let's see, workouts, push it back and, you know, the simple mm -hmm. stuff like that, or, um, you know, to, uh, wanting some Jordans. They know I'm a little bit of a shoe yeah. guy and they're a okay. lot of a shoe guys. So, um, I've dangled the, the Jordans as a, um, as a team shoe or, um, yeah. in fact, so we actually are, our SEC championship ring, it, um, it came back and it was, it was kind of messed up. So we had to send it back. So it took longer to get it than we would like. And they were getting frustrated mm -hmm. and I was getting frustrated. And so, mm -hmm. I had our equipment guy. We got the purple and gold, purple uh, Jordan one lows, and um, nice. So I said, "Let's get these for the team." I said, and we put the ring inside the shoes. We put nice. the shoes in the in the box, and so I said, we had a, a team dinner. Uh, I was like, "Look, we um, kind of made it as a Christmas party kind of thing," mm -hmm. and um, I said, "All right." I had my equipment guy come in. I said, look, sorry guys, it's taking so long on the rings, but G and I found these mm -hmm. uh, shoes. So this is kind of a hold you over. And then they opened it up and the rings were inside the, the purple Jordan that's, one low. That's so excellent. They, uh, they were pretty pumped about that, but, um, yeah, no, you know, they, they're, they're pretty fair. They, they know when, um, you know, just different things about mm -hmm. college. Yeah, I mean, asking for this or that and, yeah. and have, some of the times I'm not even thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Let's go. Uh, sure. other stuff i'm like no this is why and they don't <laughs> they don't know the other information sure. but yeah chick-fil-a for breakfast things like that yeah what, what they want to vote on sure well very cool yeah that's an awesome way to to kind of celebrate them with it the, with the jordans as well i love that i thought it was pretty good <laughs> yeah i think so and and yeah not expecting it and then you get Thanks. both at, at both times yeah and, and obviously golf is a very heavily mental sport um and you've been on both sides of it as a player and as a coach. And how do you kind of motivate players when, when they're facing adversity or how do you handle that mental side of golf from a, a coaching standpoint um, in your, in your program? I think most of that work is done before you, you get to the tournament. Um, I've done a few things to motivate players and as a team and individually, but um, 
uh, the one thing I keep talking about is motivation comes and goes, but, but discipline's different. So they, they hear me say mm-hmm. discipline's different. Um, if you have the discipline to stay in, in those habits, you, you'll, you'll build, um, you, you'll build habits and, and they'll help you with adversity on and off the course. Um, you know, while on the course and they're kind of going haywire. I mean, I remember a time I was, um, coaching and walking with Curtis Thompson, who is Lexi Thompson's brother. Yeah. And yeah. he just was kind of going mental, uh, non-shocker to those that know, but yeah, Curtis yeah. Is a great I've, I've guy. seen him play. Yeah. He, he is a, he's a great guy. He has a kind yes. heart. He, uh, he wears this, uh, he's just on ferocious sleeve. on the course. Yeah. And, um, so he's going, he's going berserk one day and, um, I just mm-hmm. caught him off guard and I said, do you like cats? And he just turned to me and was like, what? <laughs> and then we started talking about cats and I knew he had a cat or his yeah, girlfriend or yeah. something at the time. And so he completely forgot about the bad shot and we started talking about cats. Mm-hmm. And so that's one way to kind of catch him off guard sure. to get him back on track on the, on the course I've used. But, um, yeah, I think a, a lot of that works is done back at home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen it. I followed him um, on the Corn Ferry Tour. He was playing with a guy, uh, a player that we've interviewed, Taylor Moore. They were paired up together yep. um, out here in Chicago. But definitely, definitely a um, great player and a little ferocious on the course. But everyone, everyone uh, handles it a different way. That's exactly. for sure. Exactly. And from from a coaching standpoint, you said you walked 90 miles during the, the 2015 National Championship. I'm intrigued to, I know a lot of coaches are different. Some, some like to um, help specific players, maybe some of the younger players and walk with them for the entire round or bounce around. What, a, what does a, a round look like for you when you're coaching and the teams out there playing, playing different matches or on different holes? How do you uh, balance kind of, I guess, your strategy as a coach and, and making sure everyone's um, doing all right? Yeah, I mean, b- before the round, I'm on the range, just making sure everybody, they mean, look at anything, how's it look, tighten it up. And then when we go tee mm-hmm. off, um, I typically send Alexis Rather, who's my assistant, out with yeah. a, a younger player or the, the first player out um, mm-hmm. and let her kind of see the course. And she can relay back to me, hey, watch this pin on two, watch this, sure. you know, it's fast, it's slow, all this stuff. And, um, and she's with the younger player that will help her kind of, show her how we manage around the course, what we do, team golf, all this stuff. Um, you know, I, I tend to bounce around a little bit more, um, but mm-hmm. I always let them know, hey, I'm going to start out on on three and four, and then I'll see you by this. Um, I, I like to hang out on the par fives. Um, mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, we try and make our money there. It's a, a good, yeah. a lot of decisions whether to go for it or not. Um, and if I can read a putt that helps somebody, um, you know, I obviously want to do mm-hmm. that. So I, I joke that I wish I could go walk 18 holes with one player, get done, walk 18 holes with the next mm-hmm, player, get done. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously can't do that. And uh, I, I, I like to stay with the player for a little while because you, mm-hmm. you build up, uh, you, you can see patterns and trends and, and kind of help them out. Um, you know, and I, and I asked the players before, what, what you guys need me on any holes? And they'll tell me, Hey, I, I don't know what to do on 16 or can you be sure. there on 12? Um, and so, I try to be there for those and, and walk them through that and, and really just, uh, just touch them all a little bit. And, um, and I, I'm not a big par three guy, um, unless yeah. it's really tricky. I just, I feel like sometimes that can be a social scene for a lot of coaches and, you know, it's like, it's a, it's a seven iron. It's, you know, middle of the green. It's not sure. like there's not much now if it's blowing crazy and this and that, I may relay back some clubs and stuff, but, Mm-hmm. Um, I try and be on either really tricky holes or, or some of the par fives, um, to make, make your money scared. Yeah. Money don't make money. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no laying up <laughs> yeah. for another podcast reference. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think that that makes total sense. And I think everyone's a little bit different, but I think that makes p- perfect sense to me if, if I was coaching as well. So I would, uh, I would definitely do the same thing. Well, and Alexis obviously, and I- Oh, I was ahead. just gonna say Alexis and I like she's out there first and I we have a plan and then I always say and then we'll read the defense and react because yeah if 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 someone's not playing good I may jump back and hang on with them for a while and get mm-hmm. them going and if and there's been times where I'm like hey you're not gonna see me the rest of the day I'm gonna be with this person and the lady's like sure. all right I got it so um, yeah I joke we we read the defense and react yeah <laughs> even game, though I said game time no defense adjustments <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah game time adjustments 
Yeah. Has there been any, I guess, uh, maybe just horrible weather conditions or, or, or moments that you kind of remember as a coach that you really had to lean in a little bit more than, than maybe some other events depending uh, I mean, on couple, the, the course conditions or, or course setup? Yeah. A couple of years ago, we played in Columbia, South Carolina and it, it hailed. Uh, it started to hail. It was. I kinda, would say that's a little difficult. Uh, that was, that was the first thing. It was like a uh, sea salt size hail. Yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah. But it, they're like, Coach, what, what is this puck gonna do? Like, I, can can I move mm-hmm. the hail? And I'm like, ah, mm-hmm. actually, I'm not sure. I don't. <laughs> sure, I've never sure. uh, played in the hail. So, um, you know, mm-hmm. we played in rain and wind and cold and and everything else. Um, you know, we we they, the guys and the girls kind of joke ever since I got to LSU because I'm a from Florida and I like the water and everything. They joke mm-hmm. that I, I created the blue water tour because we've gone <laughs> to Cabo. We go to the Bahamas. We've gone to the Dominican yeah. Republic. We go yeah. to South Florida. We go all these places, uh, Hawaii, um, Palm yeah. Springs. So they, they joke it's the blue water tour. So, but we try and build a schedule that is more like the, like the PJ tour and the LPJ tour kind of mm-hmm. touch all four corners of the country and get playing mm-hmm. on different grasses and conditions. So, well, I wouldn't be complaining as a player as on the Blue Water Tour, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. I would I would be enjoying it. Uh when it comes to, you know, the SEC conference, obviously you guys won the championship in, in 2022. Kind of we've we've kind of touched on these as well, I think, throughout of your philosophy and, and kind of how you set up your program. But how do you feel like you set set yourself apart in the conference or even when you're when you you've obviously been a part of the men's side and then in, at Nova, how do you kind of separate yourself within the conference to, to be more appealing or, yeah, or just be better, be a better Yeah, program? no, I mean, well, that's, that's a question we basically ask almost every single day. And in, in, yeah. in the SEC, it's, it's hard to really separate yourself because it seems like at any, any time you can look at the rankings and there's nine or 10 SEC teams in the top 25. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, there's four or five in the top 10 at, at certain points. Um, you know, for, for LSU, I think some of the things that set, set us apart that, you know, we don't have much to do with it is the weather. You know, we yeah. have one of the, the better weather. Uh, we have some of the better weather, uh, you mm-hmm. know, like us in Florida probably have the best in the mm-hmm. year round. Um, LSU is unique in that it's a flagship university. Um, you know, we're not competing with really any other schools in the States, like say a Texas or a Florida or, a, yeah. or an Auburn, Alabama. Um, and that's mm-hmm. turned out to be kind of, a little more beneficial in the NIL era, um, you know, because everybody in the state, all the businesses in the state, uh, they're LSU fans. They go to LSU mm-hmm. football games. They mm-hmm. want to see wins. So that's actually benefited some of our players a little bit more, which I wouldn't have necessarily said that was as big of an advantage uh, in years past as it is now. Sure. Um, you know, we're, we're one of the few programs that make money off our athletic department. Uh, we generate mm-hmm. around $200 million a year, mm-hmm. which is, near the top of the country and that money gets filtered back to the sports program. Um, mm-hmm. I know there's some stats out there with like, we're one of two schools, I think to have um, a number one draft pick in all the major sports. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we have, I think we're near the top and number one draft picks uh, combined in all sports um, all time. So, you know, you, you go to lunch and, you know, I remember sitting next to a Heisman trophy winner and Joe Burrow. Yeah. And you're, you're next to world uh, world record holders, Olympians, uh, famous TikTokers now, and, and living <laughs> yeah. on. Uh, so, yeah. you know, our, our administration wants to win. Um, I haven't been told no too many times, and uh, you know, those are things that help um, in, in separating yourself and, and competing for championships. Mm-hmm. I would say, as as myself as a fan, it's coming down there. The tailgating is not bad for football games as well. The yes to get people to, to show up to games. You got the pot of gumbo on the side of the, the RV. I don't think it gets much better than that. Oh yeah. The, the tailgate. I mean, I'm obviously biased, but it's uh it's second to none. Yeah. Well, I, I came from an FCS school, which is like divi- very low division one. So going, going from uh Hancock stadium at, in Illinois state country to uh tiger stadium, in Baton Rouge is a stark contrast, <laughs> one might say. Uh, yeah, but, I can imagine so. Yeah, it was it was uh, a wonderful experience uh, to be down there and experience the game. And you talked a little bit about, you know, getting players ready um, for like their professional careers and preparing them outside of golf. And 
obviously mm-hmm. there's a lot of events you spend time with the women um, on the road, but there are some events that they they go off and play on their own, obviously as amateurs in the women's game and top amateurs. So what is it like to watch, you know, Ingrid, Carla, uh, and, and those other girls that have played on, you know, the U S women's open, the, the new women's amateur at Augusta. Um, I think I, I was watching an let event, um, with Leona McGuire and they showed Carla in Spain, um, as well. So as you know, it sounds like you kind of have a, a little bit of a dad hat that you put on every once in a while. So what is it like watching, watching them um, from afar when maybe you can't step in and, and provide them some advice? It, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. I, I, in fact, I, I mean, I remember when I first took over the women's job, kind of went from the, the height of the men's side to the, a little bit of the bottom on the SEC on the women's side. And um, I went out recruiting my first summer and went to the U.S. Women's Amateur. And um, mm-hmm. I'm on the range and I see all these other bags from schools, you know, out there with multiple players in the field and they're coming up to their coaches and, you know, she didn't have anybody in the field. And I was like, I would like, I need to change that. And I want to get to that point where I have some of my current players that are playing in the women's amateur come up, see him and all that. And uh, fast forward and I, I've gotten to see a number of our players playing the women's am. Um, in fact, a couple of years ago, Latana had her dad caddy the first round and, and couldn't go the second round. So I jumped in and caddied for the second nice. round. And yeah. um, so we've had multiple players in the amateur, the uh, the U.S. Women's Open, uh, Arnold Palmer mm-hmm. Cup, the Curtis Cup, uh, Augusta National Women's Amateur you mentioned. I, I'm just uh, mm-hmm. I'm so grateful and fortunate that they want me there um, to, yeah. as their coach to be there and, and be invited. And, uh, and to just go as a fan is, is awesome. Um, you know, it means probably more to me than they'll, they'll ever know, but it's, uh, I, I like it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I would think, uh, it would be a little bit of nerve wracking because obviously you want them to do well, um, and, and kind of have that coach's hat on while, while you're watching them. But I think just being proud of them for, for making it to those, you know, very special and, and high touted events has to feel pretty good as a coach. And then you use that. Uh, in your recruiting track, I would uh, I'd assume as well. So, very cool stuff. Yeah. Definitely less uh, less nerve wracking though watching them. Yeah, as a just kind of let um, them do their thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I, it's um, I guess when we're on the team, I, I have or when I watch them, I have left to worry about. I feel like um, yeah, yeah. When I'm there, I'm I'm just their hype man and support team. Um, you yep. know, and, and do anything they might need me to have. Uh, you know, U.S. Am. Uh, um, like I said, a caddy for Latana, mm-hmm, and then mm-hmm. I was on the range with uh, Ingrid at the U.S. Open last summer. I just kind of boxed out a few people, and she she thanked me. She noticed it that they're coming to bother her, and I kind of boxed it out and intercepted that. And she mm-hmm. she thanked me, so because she's one that when she's focusing, she's focusing. And yeah, so um, I'm definitely less nervous. I just feel like I'm a I'm the hype man slash get back coach. Uh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> bodyguard and hype man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you mentioned, you know, Ingrid, um, uh, being one of the top amateurs and, you know, most likely going professional after her time at LSU. How do you, how do you work with preparing, um, some of these folks like Ben Taylor, you mentioned Sam Burns, how do you prepare them for the professional game while they're still at the collegiate level? I, I really just try and ask them questions that, that they may not have thought of before. Um, you know, mm-hmm. it's usually more logistic questions like, where are you going to live? Where are you going to practice? Where are you going to work out? Um, how will you pay for that? Uh, the money issue mm-hmm. is, a, is a big piece yeah. of it. Are you going to sign with an agent? Are you not? You know, um, you know, before agents had anything, players like Sam, like I said, would ask me to sit in on them. And so uh, that obviously meant a lot to me. But I, I was really just trying to ask the questions that maybe they're they're not thinking of. Um, and, and, and ask them questions to get them to think about, well, maybe, you know, I was going to do this, but maybe this would be more efficient or, you know, mm-hmm. what am I going to do about this? And, and to kind of get their ducks in a row well before it's, it's go time. Um, because mm-hmm. you don't want to school wins, turn pro two weeks later, and then like figure that all out now. So I yeah. try and ask those questions early. Um, so they have a plan, which will lead them to be less stressed in the spring hopefully and and feel like they're more prepared i think anybody when you when you're more prepared you're you feel better feel more confident and perform better so 
just trying to, to ask those questions. I mean, I've, like I said, I've been fortunate enough to sit in on a lot of those meetings with some of the agents and, and know how it works a little bit. So it, it, um, it helps to, to mm -hmm. show them what they're thinking or what's out there and, and to ask the questions that they don't know they need to ask basically. Yeah. Yeah. Just setting them up for success with, with, uh, I think even as a college student thinking back, it's like, I don't, you don't think about those things. So you just keep them in check to, to make sure they're prepped and ready to go. Exactly. I remember talking to a player and I was like, she goes, well, I'm gonna live here and I'm gonna do this. And I was like, okay. And I was like, and we we're talking about money. I, she's like, well, I need mm -hmm. like, like $1,500 a month. I said, okay, let's do this real quick. Yeah. How much is rent? <laughs> How much is this? What about this? What about this? She goes, Ooh, I need a lot more. I was like, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> Let's pull up the budget spreadsheet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. And uh, so, you know, you're you're coming into the fold of the spring season here, going to some some of these various events that that you mentioned. What uh, what are you hoping for for the team? Obviously, you probably won't, will. Your ultimate goal is obviously win a, a national championship. But um, what do you what are you looking most forward to in the spring season? Yeah, I mean, our goals kind of this spring are similar to the last few years. We we want to be better in April and May than we were in January and February. Um, mm -hmm. And we want to be around it at the end. Um, you have to have a lot of things happen uh, and go your way. But, um, you know, if we can stay motivated, stay healthy, and, and play our game, we, we should be around it. Um, and if you're around it, hopefully you get some bounces and some breaks. And, you know, when, when I took over and even to this day, I mean, I never really talk about rankings. Um, I just talk about mm -hmm. a lot of our stats and improving um, that, and that stuff will take care of itself. So, you know, when we won the national championship, I, we didn't talk really much about winning the national championship. It was kind of know your role, do your job and, and that stuff will, will happen. So, you know, this spring I'm looking forward. We, we've got three in a row we're playing, which is um, I'm a little nervous because I've never done back to back to back kind of like this, um, especially yeah. without, uh, going home. So we're going to go to the Bahamas in Albany for our first tournament in the spring. And then from there, we're going to go straight to Florida and play in Melbourne, Florida. And then we're home for four days before we go to the Darius Rucker, which will be televised on the golf channel. And those are three events. I, I looked at our whole schedule for the spring and we'll only see six, six teams the whole spring that are ranked outside the top 50 in the country. So if you're mm -hmm. off a little bit, you can uh, you can slide the wrong way. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, our, our goal is, is, like I said, to be better at the end than we were at the beginning and uh, just be around it and, and hopefully have an opportunity to, to do something special. Yeah, definitely a good proving ground to uh, set yourself up for success to play that that quality of, of teams across the board. And then in the fall, hopefully we'll we'll see each other again at the Jackson T. Stevens Cup at Trinity Forest this year. Unfortunately, I hate to break it to you, we are not uh, going to be there. Oh, we no. but, but our men's, our men's team will be there. So you'll have to get some All good right. pictures and then yeah. and take over some uh, some of the men's stuff there. Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll make sure to to mention your name, and I'm, I'm sure it'll be uh, great to have them, but we'll miss you guys. Yeah, we, um, sure. we, we, I think they're trying to change up some teams, get a, get a few more teams in there. We were... We were fortunate. I think we got the best end of that deal with the Elotion and oh, then Seminole for sure. I'll, uh, I'll sit the third one out. For yeah, that. yeah, a hundred percent. I would say this is probably a good year to to sit out as well. Um, I did I did reach out to Ingrid and she provided me some questions. So I'm going to ask you one fun one from uh -oh. her, and uh -oh. it's it's now. nothing simple. It's just about uh, apparently you regret your ping putter, and I'm interested to hear the story. <laughs> No, we, we had Ping. <laughs> Ping came in, and um, Ping is very good to us. Uh, a lot of our girls mm -hmm. play, and they come in and fit all the girls. And yeah. Yeah, I was like, gee, pick out a putter. And I was kind of back and forth on some sight mm -hmm. lines and this and that. And um, I left off a couple sight lines, and I did one big top line. And uh, Okay. And and she has two. We had the same – I got the same putter she did, actually, just a little mm -hmm. different. And uh, – I kept on set when I picked up her part of the other day, I said, man, I, sh I wish I would have added these. Cause I mean, they'll okay. be it. purple gold, yeah. your name, this, all this stuff. And, uh, mm -hmm. I wish I would have added something like that. So yeah, it just made uh, it a little bit more. Yeah. Add a little flair to it. I need to play more anyway for it to, to really matter. I mean, I'm sure. at the point where I, I want my clubs to look good because that, that's, that's going to affect my game. The, the, the paint job on the yeah. really <laughs> affects my game right now. It's, uh, 
Yeah, how much? <laughs> play more. Uh, obviously, you coach a lot. Do you get to uh, to play much um, when you have some free time outside of coaching? No, um, I think I played three rounds of golf last year okay. um, in a two day span. Um, mm-hmm. That's one of my goals this year is to play more golf. Um, Ingrid jokes because she's one of the last ones after mm-hmm. after the tournament on the range. I mean, till till end, and so a lot of times I'll send Alexis back with the other players mm-hmm. to the hotel, and I'll sit there with the Ingrid as long as she wants and. I'll grab her club and hit a couple shots. And she always jokes, she goes, did you get your practice done for the month? I was like, yep, <laughs> all done. So yeah. um, I need to start playing a little bit more. But um, it's kind of like yeah. those, you know, plumbers have a house with leaks and painters exactly. house needs painting. And, um, well, I feel the same way sometimes when I'm going to all these courses, taking photos and things like that. And it's like, you know, I wish I could actually play a little bit more in, on these wonderful places that we're visiting. Oh, I- I, Alexis and I were joking about that. We have walked probably the yeah. best lineup of courses this year yeah. between Augusta National, Marion, uh, mm-hmm. St. Andrews, Muirfield, mm-hmm. uh, Seminole. Um, yeah. I know I'm forgetting a few other ones. Um, sure. We, you know, been to Pebble. I don't Beach think anyone can that, beat but, that lineup. Yeah, mm-hmm. but never played. Never. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I hit a yeah. shot on the range here and there or yeah. whatever. But we we yeah. walked the best of them. So. Uh, mm-hmm. um, Maybe maybe we like them more because we don't have to put a score up to it. Yeah, <laughs> you just get share. to kind of soak it in and, and appreciate yeah. it a little bit more. Well, Garrett, I appreciate your time very much. I think a lot of people will enjoy this one with your insight into the collegiate game. Um, but very once again, thank you for being on the show. And go Tigers for the, the rest of the season. Thank you very much for having me. I enjoyed it. Go Tigers. Yeah. Yes.